Live long and prosper. So I just thought I'd show you some stuff I bought recently, show you what's going on and just give you a little bit of an update because I've done a lot of kind of flippant videos over the last couple of weeks, mostly because I had got quite seriously depressed, I believe, in July and August and I needed to actually kickstart myself out of it. So I dropped the uploading and I started to be very selective what I was watching on media and I looked for humour in a crisis, which I think is a really important thing to do. So I'm feeling a little bit better and I will show you what I've been up to. So this is a new light I've got. It was about a hundred bucks Canadian. It took me a while to figure to stand up, but it works quite well. You can alter it. You're supposed to be able to put the camera in here, but I wasn't really that keen on that. It makes it a bit top heavy. This is what it looks like with this light. And if you notice the last video I did, that also had this light on. And I think it really improves the quality of my facial expressions. This is it without the light on. Full light. And you can adjust it. Which is kind of fun. So yeah, I'm getting a bit more technical. I'm shooting on a Luminex. This one doesn't have a screen that you can flip out. And also, because it's a new Luminex, they want you to use Wi-Fi to actually connect the data to the computer, which I don't do, so I have to flip out the SD card and put it manually into the computer each time. But I'm waiting for my new camera to be fixed, and it's going to be months because there's a huge backlog because of the pandemic. This is without the light. Of course, my big fall project has been sanding the deck. It's 300 square feet, not meters as I incorrectly said. And of course, nobody called me on it because nobody knows what a meter is in America. This is the circular sander. Yes, I should have got a belt sander, but I haven't. What's happened with this is this is actually frayed here. So I actually lose the pads quite often and it's annoying me. So my good neighbor, Doug, said to me, you can change that base, you know, if you order it on Amazon. And he's right, you can. So I've ordered it on Amazon. It should arrive tomorrow. So now I'll be able to finish the deck project in the next week or so and get it ready for painting and staining. One of the other things I'm doing is I'm still recycling my N95s. This is a one we use shopping, so it's not very contaminated. These two are interesting. Um, you'll see the blacks. These are actually COVID masks from Kitty. Um, she's been, she threw a few out actually, but she has recently been doing quite a bit of COVID again at Sunnybrook. So there you go. So. I'm going to recycle them, but I'm going to do it the same way. 170 Fahrenheit. I said it at 175 because it runs a bit low, this oven. Dedicated baking tray. Place them on it, metal side up, and bake them for an hour. So I have two boxes, and I already did a box, and this is the other box. Different types of masks that we've used for different reasons. They're not really COVID ones, but they could be, so we're careful with them. But these two are COVID. So how will I do it differently? What I'm gonna do differently with these is when I open them up, I will be having an N95 on, and I will also put them on the same tray, and I will bake them the same way, but I will be washing my hands very carefully and disposing of the bags. Try not to generate any motion very gently with these, so they'll go in last. Oh, and I just want to say for Joe Primal and a few other people out there that have this type of N95, if you see this, this is really common with these. What I'm starting to do now with new ones of these, which I don't use very often, is I'm actually stapling the edges of them because what happens with these is they actually break quite easily. So that's what I've been doing, stapling them. So it's this type of mass that has a major problem. The other N95s are the rubber ones and this is why they threw them all out because they tend to break easily. However, you can replace the straps fairly easily. And again, I'm also using staples to reinforce them. So after an hour, I turn it off, leave it in here for a while. There we go. Freshly baked N95s. Non-N95s, but better than surgical masks. 
and surgical masks. So this is 300 square feet. I was hoping to have it finished before Kitty got back, but the sander's not working properly, so I have to wait. And I will get it done. What I do is I like to put the circular sander on its edge, get the edging right, and as you can see, with it falling off easily, I wasn't able to do that. Once that's done, light sanding cleaning of this, get this all white. There's some actual face work that needs to be repaired at the front. So you won't be able to see from this angle. I tend to stain the uh, seed as well. I made that myself from a kit. <laughs> and get ladders up and go around. It's a big project. The actual painting and staining will be very easy. As you can see, look at Ivy's in the lovely house. Ah, <sighs> sigh. Anyway, we've got fall breaking out all over the spot. You see the sumacs have turned in the garden and our vegetable beds are blooming. But yeah, we'll be snowing soon enough. This is a test for the camera position because it has no screen that I can flip out. I've been reading this bunch of books from this guy and also another author that's really a lot better than this and it's been kind of interesting looking through a bunch of his series related to the same events interesting I found these I kind of thought these would be exciting Chili Maple Django Chili Arabal I also found these Almond Hippie Snacks I thought they'd be perfect I also got one of these. Uh, Kitty does not like this type of coffee at all. It gets very agitated. She likes very expensive dark roasts. But a couple of tins of this, even if it goes solid inside, you can use a spoon and boiling water and make coffee. If there's no coffee coming into a country for a prolonged period, something like this would be a very, very nice thing to have. I have quite a few of these now. I just buy them every so often when they're cheap. They're basically less than $5 American for each tin and by strict rationing these could last an awful long time. I know coffee's bad for the world, I know coffee's a luxury item and you can easily do without it, but realistically speaking I don't really want to do without coffee once or twice a week, no matter how bad the SHTF is. I ordered these online, I, we haven't used them yet, this is a made called Jaguar, they're a little bit pricey, but they seem to cut hair a lot better than the cheap Chinese version Kitty got. And as she will be continuing to cut my hair throughout the next months, two years, because let's face it, personal lockdown is what I'm in. I don't really care what the government says is safe. I look at stats. But they have a little thing on there and they're actually good. And I did do a little bit of a test. What? Because you can never do this yourself, right? So it cuts really easily. And the other ones are very blunt. So I was quite happy with these. From the reviews and everything I saw online, there are really expensive Japanese ones. But these seem to be probably in the price range that would be okay. It's like about $80 Canadian. But how much do you generally spend on haircuts? I also pick up stuff like aluminium foil when I see it in a store on offer. I don't buy like a thousand of them, but I'll buy like one or two. And we bought two because Kitty actually needed some. And this again was extremely price efficient. So that's why I bought it. And this sort of a thing just put away in a box. If you actually are in a homestead environment or a bad winter or any sort of an SHDF where shopping is no longer an option, having little bits of things like this stuck by is actually good. A lot of people are spending a lot of their preps on MREs and guns and ammo. It could well be a mistake. Something like this allows you to quite easily roast squash and potatoes with a wood fire setup. So something like this will allow you to roast using fire, wood fires, potatoes, sweet corn, and a whole bunch of things. So this is really kind of an essential piece of kit that most people have, but do they have enough to last for a prolonged SHTF? Probably not. The other thing I always pick up when I see them on offer, because they're incredibly pricey and I can't stand Starbucks, but for me in Canada, this is the best available coffee at a price range that I'm prepared to pay for. 
True North Coffee, Pike's Place, blah blah blah. I hate Starbucks, I don't really like them and this is quite expensive, but you get eight sachets and they usually charge you over a dollar Canadian each, but when they drop to $3.99, I buy them. I find these really useful for me when I'm kayaking or camping. You could of course use them for bug out. Anyway, that's all for me. Toodles. <laughs> Of course, Marmalade never sleeps. <laughs>